this about the same time as uh, you're meeting Glenn O'Brien, or is this... No, is the, no, I knew Glenn O'Brien early. 74, I mm -hmm. knew him. That's when I first met him, 74. I came up with this philosophy that the people who you think are important aren't, and the people that you don't think are important are. Mm -hmm. And I came up with this idea that instead of like looking at people in terms of their position, I should, the people that would appear to me who, uh, who I didn't, um, that I didn't have, think I had any importance at all, that I started saying, well, these are the people that are really important. You know, that there's a secret behind them, that there's something. And if I relate to them and give them my energy rather than people who are important, who have a famous name, that then something great will happen. And about two days, and based on that, I had to go with people that I normally wouldn't go with. Mm -hmm. And so I met this um, Tom Scully and Susan Hannaford. They made me these overtures that they wanted me to come to their house and talk to them about play. And I being in a play or a show, and I really didn't want to be in it, and I wasn't even going to go, but I was starving, and I thought, maybe they'll have something to eat. Mm -hmm. And at the last, very last minute, I made the decision to go based on maybe I would get something to eat if I went, because in those days, there, there wasn't any food around. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went, and their idea was, they were out of it, and their idea was to, to get like a garage or a basement and do some sort of, it seemed to me like a drag queen, weird art thing, like big pieces of ripped paper like hanging from the ceiling. One of these weird art things that involve drag queens and something like that. And when I think of the pyramid now, maybe they were ahead of their time. <laughs> but um, my attitude was that this was already passe and that I wasn't interested in that. And I encouraged them with the help of Ann Magnuson, to put on a, a, a uh, Little Rascals type show, meaning that out of nothing, you would create something big through pretending. Mm -hmm. And that was really the principle behind New Wave Vaudeville. That was half, and then the other half was them, Susan Hanford and Tom Scully, these two, um, they, I don't know, they were called Swarthmore Kids or something. Because he was a film buff, so he was probably getting it from Godard and... No, 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 that wasn't it at all. Somebody said Christian Hoffman said call it New Wave Vaudeville. No. no. Oh, I can't remember exactly, I think. Sometimes I think that it, we were attempting to commercialize, but that might have been later. That we, it was a, I think it was an attempt to commercialize on this term that had already been, it was provided by the media. I know that. My friend Christian told me that the word had been labeled by the media. And he knew the exact article that it first appeared in. And in fact, I have the proof of it because at the time of this use of the new wave, we already thought the name was completely passe. And Bradley Field invented the term no wave mm -hmm. at the new wave. And I sang the, there's no wave like the new wave at the show, mm -hmm. which was to say, even though we are pretending to be this new wave, mm -hmm. right, for the media so that we can get this money, mm -hmm. we know that there, it is completely passe. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, the song is, there's no wave like the new wave, and the new wave is the no wave. So we say yes, yes to the new, new, no, no wave. And I'm telling you, wave, that it only goes to show wave, that we'll say yes, yes to the new, new, no, no wave. I knew it had to be no. I know it had to be new. It didn't have to be me, but I knew it had to be you. There's no wave like the new wave, and the new wave is the no wave. So we'll say yes, yes to the new, new, no, no wave. And my attitude at the time was, because my attitude was that time had stopped. And this was the last wave. It was the no wave. Mm -hmm. and there, this was the end of fashion. And from this point, we were going to go back in time. 
that we were stopping time. Mm -hmm. We were going to say we are no longer going to be a part of this movement into the future, which is an old-fashioned process of just constantly heading to the future. Mm -hmm. We're going to stop time. And that's the way I read this idea of no wave. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no wave. You know, the idea of the waves coming to the sea. There's no wave. Mm -hmm. This is it. You know. There was an incredible period of revivalism which is still going on after that show. Oh, yes, yeah, 60s and 50s. I mean, 50s first and then 60s. Right. Now they're going to revive Glitter Rock. Great. The thing is, is I introduced them to Bradley Field and Christian Hoffman and tried to get them hooked in with the... Third Street crowd, which I knew was linked back with the Minneapolis crowd, which was the Art Society. Mm -hmm. Those people were very cool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm speaking the way they were. They were intolerant when I say uncool. They were intolerant of other people. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they drank a lot, and they, it was an in crowd that was connected with the old in crowd, which was connected to the older in crowd, the old in crowd. You know, of they were, and that was connected with William Burroughs, and they were connected with this older New York Bohemian society that went back. You know, was connected with Allen Ginsberg. It was mm -hmm. right. This was the still a part of that world, and the, they were all trying to meet those people. They were involved with those people, and the idea of just some. You know, it was before the East. It, this was the beginning of. The, inundating the East Village with uh, suburban kids mm -hmm. that, um, you know, and, you know, I'm not saying there's anything bad about that. I think that, you know, what Tom Scully and Susan Hannaford did was really good, but that's what it was. Mm -hmm. It was, um, you know, they had gone to school here in the city. They'd met, uh, they were in the wrong society. They were in this, like, drag queen um, society. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I introduced them to this, um, the, that No Wave Society with James Chance and Anya and mm -hmm. those people. Another example of that is Leonard Abrams of the East Village High. He's a perfect example of this suburban kid who I met through the East Village, and he came up to me, and I was open to these, in other words, I'm telling you, I was open to these weird people mm -hmm. that before I hadn't, I'd been closed to them. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He was working for the Gramercy Park Herald. He was a complete jerk. Mm -hmm. And he came up to me, and I knew he was a jerk. The people around me knew he was a jerk. But I said, no, I'm going to be open to these new people. Mm -hmm. And I founded the East Village I with him. Mm -hmm. And I worked to bring it right into society to say, okay, you know, you're going to go. These are the right people to be involved in. This is the old society. And one of the things was to put James Chance on the cover to start it right off, because he was at the top mm -hmm. right then. Mm -hmm. And I knew Anya was very difficult to deal with. She was very difficult. I don't know if you know these kind of people, mm -hmm. that you can't even speak. And every word that you say has to just be, you have to like pray around them mm -hmm. in order to be in their company. Mm -hmm. And even then they go and they get mad at you or mm -hmm. whatever. And I arranged for him to be on the cover, the photographic session, and she said, the only thing is, I don't want him done in orange. Now, she was stating this because she was a very powerful person, and she made these decisions, and people had to listen to what she said. Mm -hmm. Well, Leonard put her on the cover in orange. But Leonard put James on the cover in orange. He did it, and I, he said he did it on purpose. He did it on purpose. And I, mm -hmm. I said, well, you know, forget it. You know, goodbye. And what he was trying to say is that none of these people have any power and that um, I'm, I'm the editor and I'm going to do this and blah, blah, blah. It was like three years when that magazine of his could have been doing something for everybody, mm -hmm. making everybody successful instead of him involved with um, lessening people that were doing something right. and bringing in new people all the time, picking up on new people, new people, new people, new people, new people, and just like flooding his magazine with, with nobodies. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that he, it was just nothing. It didn't do anything for anybody. That's and right. it infuriated me. And I, I, you know, it, my plan, which was absolutely possible, was to put 
have James on the first cover of the newspaper, put Deborah Harry on the second one, which was absolutely possible at that time, and then to get Mickey Rooney on the third, which was absolutely possible at that time, because Mickey Rooney had just made his comeback on Broadway. He wasn't that famous, and through Deborah Harry, we could have gotten Mickey Rooney, put Mickey Rooney on the cover, and we would have had a city-wide newspaper. <laughs>